Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and we have two special guests today, <laughs> people we've been, we've been trying to get on the air for a long time, Betty, Flood, All, and Roselle Nicodemus. I'm going to start with both of those people to let, let them tell you a little bit about themselves, but there is so much to tell that we're going to have to talk very fast. Roselle, let's start with you since we have to go back farther. Are you sensitive about your age? No, I'll be 93 in 93 October. 93 in October. <laughs> and when were you born, where were you born, and who were your parents? Born in Wadsworth. And uh, where? Uh, on Beck Street, I on think. On Beck Street. <laughs> and what day exactly? 28th of, of October. October of 19... 1905, 1905. And who are your parents? What's that? Who are your parents? Uh, Ed, Ed and uh, Alice Schaefer. Ed and Alice Schaefer. And Alice was who be before she was married? She was Alice Edwards from Peoria, Illinois. From Peoria, Illinois. Um, we'll, we'll talk about how they got together and how you were there, how you then finally became uh, a product of that union. Now, are you the oldest in your family, Roselle? Oh, no. No, not by a long shot, right? I'm next to the youngest. <laughs> Who are the older ones, and where are they now? Uh, well, Rhea, Rhea was my oldest sister. And Let's, she was spell, that. Let's spell that. Let's spell that. R-H-E-A. Rhea, R-H-E-A. And she was married to Vance Baldwin. Vance Baldwin. That's Vance. So Homer's father. Holder, Homer's, Homer's father, that's yeah. right. And then uh, my brother was Myron Schaefer. Myron Schaefer, M-Y-R-O-N. See, we have to spell these because somebody's going to write this down 20 years from now, and we won't be around to that's help M-Y-R-O-N. M-Y-R-O-N Schaefer, and it's S-H-A-F-F-E-R. -F -F -E right, okay. And who else did you have in your family? And uh, let's see, it was uh, Rhea, and then Myron, and uh, Fred. Fred. We called him Ted. Ted. But he passed away when he was 17 years 17 old. 17 years old. Now, are you the only one of the Shaver girls? No, I have a younger brother. Yeah. A younger Some, brother. He's, uh, he'll be 91 in August. Baby <laughs> brother, 91. And where is he? Loudonville. Loudonville. And he has not been around Wadsworth. You're the only one in Wadsworth, is that right? That's right. Tell us about who some of your relatives are in Wadsworth. Though. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my kids. my dad was er, uh, yeah my dad was from around Rogers. He went to, he lived at Western Star, which at that time was the probably yes. the center of Wadsworth. Yeah, I, I told Betty he went to Lottie Mills for school teacher. He taught everybody in my family, but my mother she happened to be in Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> that would be the only reason too, because Lottie Mills taught uh, just about but, everyone. Uh, Your father would be how old right now if he were living? Oh, oh he'd be about a uh, hundred and. My mother was born in 77. There were six years difference. He was older. So. About seven, uh, 1880 or something like that? Something like that. No, she, he'd have to be older than that. He'd have to be older? My, my mother was born in 77. And who was older, your father? He was the oldest. Oh, so maybe he was born in 1875 or something like this? Well, yeah, be, maybe between 75. I don't know. Just Somewhere in that area. So he'd be. Uh, in the 120s, somewhere in that area, yeah, 100, 125 well, or... Of course, my mother was born in 77, so she'd be well over 102. Oh, surely, absolutely. And they have been gone for a long time? Yes. When did they leave? Well, about... And Brown's dad and my mother and my dad were all in about a year's time. In about a year's in time? In 57. In 1957, and, and, and about 40 years ago, or something like that. Like that. Yeah. Now, we're going to come back to your family life here in a couple of minutes, but let's find out who Betty Flood All is <laughs> and where she was born. And are you sensitive about your age, Betty? <laughs> Nope. Not at all. How old are you now? I'm 70. I was 79 May 4th. 79 on May 4th. And you were born where? In Kenmore. In Kenmore. Mm -hmm. And you came to Wadsworth? The, my, we came to Wadsworth on my first birthday. Which was first in 1920. On, in 1920, of mm -hmm. May 4th of 1920, we came to Wadsworth. And who is we? My family. Your father, mother, and two Roy brothers? Roy and Roy and Carrie Flood. Right. And my older brother, Donald, I don't know if he came at that time or not. He had been living in Cambridge with an aunt. He was my half-brother. Mm -hmm. And then Ken, Kenneth. Kenny Flood, who's in Wazza's right now, and, and who's on this program, incidentally. Yeah. And then Mary. And Mary then, Smith. Then I was next. 
And Ruthie wasn't born yet. She came along in, I think it was 1923. 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe it was. And um, she is married and she does not live around here. She lives in Port Charlotte, Florida. Port Charlotte, Florida. Mm -hmm. And she married? Uh, Stewart. Stewart. Uh, <laughs> Wilbur Stewart. Wilbur Stewart. Yeah. Wilbur Stewart. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> those are the things that we, you know, we all have the, the senior moments because we sometimes forget those things that happened uh, just recently. Now, the reason that we have the two of you on at the same time is that you have something in common, and we want to hear a little bit about that, and we're going to come to that in a minute. But I want to tell people why we have the on at the same time, and that is the two of you cooked for the Lions Club at the Masonic Temple for how many years? <laughs> I, I was on a long time before you were. Oh, I, yes. So yes. how many years, Roselle? Oh, I don't know how long. It was when they had the old, we were down at the old temple. Okay. Well, I cooked Above down there, too. Prince Keller Coons. Behind, be, below Prince Keller Coon. Uh, we want to hear about that old temple and what it was like and all of that kind of thing. Moved but up, when the new one was built, but they moved up there. When, the, when you quit cooking, you had both been there more than 50 years. Is that yes, correct? Yes, I, I know. Well, I started in 1948. That's when I became an Eastern Star. So that's 50 oh, years see. ago now. And, and uh, as soon as I joined, I was nailed to play to help the cook. <laughs> that was your. <laughs> that was the first year I was uh, a chairman. Was when I started through the chair. So that would have been forty nine, I think. Now you started cooking in forty nine. Oh, or before well, that, I, I cooked I'll before be that. A 70, I'm a seventy four year member of the Eastern Star. Seventy four year member. Of the Eastern Star. And did you have to start as soon as you started too? Cooking? No, they didn't have it when I started. When did you start cooking for Not them? Not until about forty nine when I oh. started to the office chairs. Well, right. we started cooking for them. The, Before that. When they first w were instituted, the Lions, that was in 1926. And, that, and they went to the Lutheran Church for their meals for two years. Then they went to, uh, they came up over the the Prince grocery Keller store, Coombe, Prince yeah. Keller Prince Keller and Coombe. Did you, um, did you cook in 26? Well, I don't think they had to have the, a whole lot of cooks at that time, but uh, I, I didn't cook that early. <laughs> Not that early, well, but you, you probably, probably were been waiting. 60 years cooking for them? Oh, well, at least about 50, I'd say, well, that 50? I helped. And at, at that time, why, we didn't buy a whole lot of groceries. We made everything. You made everything, yeah, and it was did. good food, too. <laughs> I'm sure it was very, very good food. Tell us about the... Um, the um, I guess we would call it the, the, the temple above Prince Keller and Kuhn. Uh, <laughs> two <how> the, rooms. <laughs> two rooms. They had, the second one is what they called their club room, and that's where they had their kitchen. It couldn't have been very big and either. It wasn't could have a been. very big kitchen. It wasn't even as big as this room, about yeah. half. <laughs> about half the size of this room, and it had <laughs> and it a stove had in it, and that was about it. It had a stove in it. That oh, it had a refrigerator. And a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And do you remember just approximately what kinds of foods did you cook in those days? Um, Oh, oh, good. We had good foods. We you didn't have roast beef and things roast like beef, that. Things like that, because you didn't have any fast foods that you could just no, throw in. No we, frozen foods no that you fast could throw foods. in. And nothing at all. Everything had to be made. I heard you say a little while ago, Roselle, that you used to make a lot of these things. Are you talking about the pies and yes, perhaps the? Yes, they, they, uh, you donated the pies and things donated like that. Donated the pies. Was this always the Eastern Star that did this? Mm-hmm. I don't think they had anybody else, did no. they? No. The Eastern I Star always, always did the did. cooking for for the, uh, for, the, um, for the few recessions for the lions. Mm -hmm. And how do they happen to choose the Eastern Stars? Well, it was probably well, centrally located, <laughs> for one thing. And maybe some of those men were uh, masons. Masons. Mm -hmm. And they got together, and they got, yeah. and they knew that you knew how to cook, and all of well. that. <laughs> Betty, you became an Eastern Star member in 19. 48, is that correct? Mm -hmm. so yes, that's, I got, just got my 50-year pin. Just got your 50-year pin. So, so you've been I there? wore it today. I'm oh, so good. proud I should of have, it. Why did Absolutely. you tell me? I would have worn mine. <laughs> and you you were an Eastern Star how many years ago? I'll be, it'll be 74, 74 years, years in March. Now, I have been trying to get someone from the, from the Mason, from the early Mason people. I would like to get those people on this program so we can get a history of those. 
And um, every time that I ask, uh, well, we can't do it this time, and maybe we'll do it later, and so forth. So now, if you can get a hold of these Masons uh, and you tell them, don't ask them, Roselle, you just tell them to come. I don't see them much. Well, you will find them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there are many of the old-timers old around. I don't think there's many of the old-timers around. There aren't too many old-timers around. There are a lot of the younger ones, and they, I would like to have you know the old-timers tell about their yeah. stories, about them, because there were some beautiful old stories mm -hmm. about those people. Tell us, Rosa, Rosa, um, um, yeah. uh, Rose, uh, Rosie, tell us about the early days of the Eastern Star. Who were they, what were they, and who were the members? Well, and, I remember uh, who the matron and patron were when I went in. And say that, that again? I remember the uh, matron and patron. Oh, matron, okay. And one was Dave Straton. Dave Straton. Yeah. But um, and, uh, what about the women who were involved? <laughs> there oh, I lost. Gosh. Huh? When you first went in, who were some of the women? Oh, my God. I don't, the, the night that I went in, it was my sister and I and Ruth Kalbetzer and uh, one other girl. There was four of us. Ruth Kalbetzer, you and your sister and another person. Do you remember who the other was person another is? another one. I'm trying to, I told you I can't remember. Oh, you can remember. <laughs> you just keep on talking. You'll remember. It'll come up to you. I'm sure I'll it will. tomorrow, I remember. Do you remember who uh, was in charge of the Eastern Stars at that time? Well, uh, the matron and patron. But the, you gave us the patron's name, but you didn't give us the matron's and, name. And he, the patron was uh, in charge. Well, well Straighton was the patron, and the worthy matron was, uh, who did you say? I don't know. Maybe Which Straighton was it? Dave Straighton? Well, it probably wasn't the one you knew. It was probably the, the one that was married to Marguerite Kramer. Yeah, that's Dave. Yeah, yeah. That's, Surely I know who he is. That's the one. <laughs> I'm not 93, but I am getting up there, you know, and I do remember some of these people. We're going to come back to the Eastern Stars because there's a very interesting history there that goes along and a lot of good uh, activity that uh, we're extremely proud of in Wadsworth. Tell us a little bit about where you were born on Beck Street and what was Beck Street like 93 well, years it, ago? It ended just about... Uh, where the cemetery starts there on part on uh, Beck Street. In other words, it was not more than about three or four hundred feet long. Then, was well, it paved? Just from from uh, from the cemetery down to College Street. Right. It's the only place they had uh, houses. And um, that would be about three or four houses, maybe five. Uh, yeah, well, Grover Bassett was one of them. He lived Grover right back. Grover Bassett. Of, he lived right back of us. Right behind him. Now, was the street paved? No, 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 not at all. Even, even Pardee Street wasn't paved. And what about College Street? Mm, well, it was one of the first ones, but I don't, not. Probably not paved at that time. Huh. Tell us what you remember about Wadsworth in 1905. <laughs> 1905, that's... Six, seven, eight, nine. Let's, let's <laughs> go to 1910. Let's, <laughs> let's, give, let's give you five years. Go to 1910. A lot of cars? No. In fact, I... We, my dad never owned a car. The father never owned a car. Did you have a horse? So, no, we didn't have a horse. We lived in town. So you walked wherever you went? So we walked to town all the time. And what if you wanted to go somewhere like Akron or somewhere like that, what would you do? Well, we either stayed home or somebody took us. And people did have my cars. Uncle, but... My uncle lived out in the country across from Booth Sky Drive and Fred Mills. Fred Mills. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had an old Walbert. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd come in and take us different And Fred places. Mills had a son, Elton Mills. Yes. And he was, Elton was your cousin. That was is their that home correct? that's out there. And uh, that house is uh, right on the corner of... Um, um, it's right across from Blue Sky. Pardon me? It's on the corner of Blue Sky. Blue Sky Theater, but it's across the huge house. And I can't think of the name of the, the, the road uh, that goes back down there. Oh, Wilson, Wilson Road. Wilson Road, Wilson Road and Broad Street. It, it wasn't there. No, it wasn't there at all. No. It was just a, and there was a coal mine that had been there before. Is that correct? That was the terminus it for the... It could have been, yes. For the, for the coal mine. That's where it but, ended up uh, there. As a matter of fact, the coal then, mine went right through your property, behind your property. That, that road is part of my uncle's land. The Williams Mine. And then... Uh, of course, they had a big barn back of the house, and from there on, it was just a lane, and that took us back to the woods where they made maple syrup every year. And you made maple syrup. Do you yeah. remember doing that? I don't think we do anymore. I mean, did you remember doing it? Oh, sure. Yeah, you remember that? Yes. Betty, you lived from Akron. You came to Wadsworth. Where did you move to in Wadsworth? 
up on, on Silver Creek Road. Silver Creek Road. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhat by itself at that time, wasn't it, the house? Oh, yes. There was the long farm and this huge field about a, oh, three quarters of a mile, then your house, and then maybe a quarter of a mile, and the riches, and then another um, quarter of a mile, and uh, the Hollinger farm, which was way yeah. back in, and then another uh, less than a quarter of a mile, and the Perkinses, and that was about it. Right. In a, in a full the country other side mile. was the Yaki farm. The Yaki farm. Kind of in between. First, we had the, um, the, uh, the um, um, Falk farm then the Yaki mm -hmm. farm, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, the railroad track. So you mm -hmm. didn't have many neighbors down there, did you? What <laughs> no. caused your father to move to? I have no idea. No, uh, not at all. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to wonder why. <laughs> but it was a nice place to grow up. It was yeah, a, it was wonderful. A good place to grow up. Tell us a little bit about your boyhood, girlhood days. I was going to say boyhood, your girlhood days down in Silver Creek. What was it like? Oh, gosh. We had a gang of kids in Silver Creek. We would play baseball. Uh, Mulaney's had it there on the corner of, of Silver Creek Road going, well, you know, down. Uh, right, it, the, uh, what is now called Silver they Crest. They had a big field that. North of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's where we would go. We now, who were some of the people that you played with, Betty? Well. <laughs> Couple of the Carino boys, right? And my older brothers. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Lutz kids. We all. Played. Don and. Um, Louis. Louis. And Bernice. Bernice Lutz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, let's see who else. How about the Hickmans? Yeah, the Hickman kids, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I think that was about all the kids down at the attic. Do you remember when the house right opposite the Mulaney's was built? Oh. 1926. Where you first lived before no, you No, no, no. You mean right across the road from or from uh, from the Mulaney farm there, the Mulaney house. No, I don't remember. Willard Hollinger built that house. Yeah, that's the yes. one I meant. Didn't, now, didn't you live in that no, house? No, no. Willard Hollinger. Willinger, Willard Hollinger. Yes, remember him? I remember when. Well, I know, yes, I knew his wife, Eunice. Pitt. Eunice Mills, mm -hmm. Mill, Mill, Mills Farmer. Yes, I remember when that was built. That was the only house from the turn of the century, the only house that was built until 1949. Mm -hmm. There's one house built from 1900 mm -hmm. until 1949 in that area. So we didn't really, really have a profusion of houses down <laughs> through there, as you mm -hmm. all know. You remember people like Eunice Mills, who's now dead, and she yes. married you, uh, Willard Hollinger. They moved to Corpus Christi, Texas. Now, Eunice Mills did not live in town at that time. She lived north of town on Rymer Road, on, the Mills Rimer family. Road, right. yes. Now, how did you happen to know Eunice Mills? Well, we worked in the same office, down the Injector. Down the Injector. And this is what I was hoping that you would tell us, because <laughs> that's what we yeah, want to hear when about. They had the little gray shack. The gray <laughs> shack. And where was the gray shack? Tell us. Right, that. right along the highway. But you see, we, uh, you know, when, when they start it. writing this history in the year 2014, that may not be there anymore. So tell us, give us some landmarks. From the old junior high school, or the uh, the the present it, junior high well, school. I think they're one. Do they still have a uh, long brick building along the sidewalk? They have. Yes, there? they do. Well, that used to be the uh, power plant, or, or the, next to the power plant. Next to the but power all, plant. Uh, the uh, employment office was in there. Was which was a shack. I mean, it was a. No, a that was in the brick part. We had to go across the, that, uh, like a driveway or something, into the great. The big gray building. And that yeah. was the office. That was the office. Now, we're that inside was... this office. Who was in there? What did they do? And who were the people who well, helped them? Well, Wayne Young. Wayne and, Young. D.D. Uh, Geisinger and D Wynn Davis and uh, Charles Geisinger. Kenneth Mills and then A.J. Jankowski after Kenneth passed away. Right. And Jankowski. who were the women who worked in there? In those days, we called them the office girls, but we don't do that anymore well, because Hattie Yoder, do you know Hattie? Hattie Yoder just died. <laughs> oh no! Didn't she? She's been a long, She's long, been long time. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Her friend, her friend, um, uh, Miss Shue. Um, Virgi Virgi uh, Virginia. Uh, Virgi uh, no, not Virginia Shue. Uh, 
Uh, Ed, I, no. Edna, Edna Daniels, Ray Daniels' wife. Ray Daniels. Wife. Wife. Edna. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably don't know any of these names. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I know. I, I know Hattie Yoder very well. And uh, some the well, a couple of Weldy girls. Which Weldies? Uh, Elizabeth Weldy and uh, Maddie Weldy. Now, they were they sisters. Earl's sisters? They were sisters. And were they sisters to Earl Weldy? No, that's Welday. This Weldy. is Welty. Welty. Okay. The LTY then, then that would be, they would be related to whom here in Wadsworth right now? I don't know. Elizabeth was married and went to Arizona, but uh, Maddie lived here, but her son lived in either Alliance or Canton or someplace. But there are some welties here in Wadsworth. There are some welties, yeah. yes. Now, what year would this have been? You were born in 19... Well, I went there from high school, and that was in 23. 23. From 1923 on, and you worked there for how many years? Tell us what the offices were like at oh. those days. I mean, did you have a big computer? <laughs> what, what was a computer? <laughs> did you have telephones? Yes, they did. It was kind of pull out on them in a little bracket. And how many telephones did you have? Well, each, office, each private office had a telephone. That's it. Mm -hmm. And one corner was uh, relegated to the bookkeeping department, one good sized corner. And what did you do? I worked in the purchasing department. In the purchasing department. Who was your boss? Well, uh, I, as I had uh, Kenneth Mills and, and then I had J.J. E. Jankowski. Jankowski was your boss in the purchasing department. And what did Hattie Mills, or what did Hattie uh, Yoder do? Well, I can't remember. Hattie never married, did she? No, she no. never married. Nice, nice person. <laughs> very nice. Just a nice person. Betty, you have something very similar to that uh, after you left high school which would have been probably in um, 37, 36, 37? I graduated in 37. 37. What did you do? Well, for a while I worked at um, Ed Hafner's 5 and 10, and then... Where was Ed Hafner's 5 and 10? That has not come up in this show since I've been on. Well, I... <laughs> Do you remember where the A and P used to oh, be? Oh, I know where it is, but we have to identify that so that we have well, a it the was historical a few account. Doors down right. from where the A and P We had was. two five and tens in Wadsworth at that time, or just one? Just that. Just that one, because oh, yes. everyone thinks that the only five and ten that we had was the Ben Franklin five <laughs> and ten by the Elsass family. The Elsass family didn't come into Wadsworth until I think 1937 or 38, somewhere along there. They didn't start that one, did they? Who did? Elsass, the one N there? No. no um, can't think of the people's name that started the other one. But tell us what it was like. Long and narrow. Yeah. They were all long and narrow. They were all long and narrow, yes. They, they, they yes, handled the, things that you don't find in a store anymore. Such like as what? Shoelaces and right. things like that that you can't find unless you go to a regular <laughs> shoe store. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, just items. Little that, small things that yes. they had, small toys and things of this nature. And how long did you work there, Betty? Well, in 1939, then I went, started the beauty school at Sayers Beauty School in Akron. In Akron. And then what did you do? Well, I worked for a while at a shop in, after I got my license in Akron, and that was too far to go. And so I started, um, I worked for Rose Clark up over the IGA store. Which was on the west side of the street, uh -huh. of Main Street. South Main there. Uh, on an alley. <clears throat> Yeah. Upstairs, okay. And I worked there until I got a call from Mary Barnes, and she was up over the liquor store. And the liquor store was on College Street, on yeah. the north side of the road. The old, the old Wadsworth Laundry Building. The old Wadsworth Laundry Building. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> you have a good memory. The old Wadsworth. She sure does. I can remember those things better than yesterday. Well, but that's what we want you to remember. We can. Rem we'll get somebody to. You know, 50 years from now, we we'll get someone to remember what happened in 1998. Bar we want to know what happened in 1918. Violet had that laundry. Who's that? Barlett. Harry Barlett. Bar Harry Barlett. Harry Barlett, Barlett had that laundry. And he lived we, we want to hear about that laundry too. Then you went into your own shop, is that right, Betty? Well, I, I started raising children. You started <laughs> and raising I had children. four children. So and what are their names? Kay. Kay. 
and Bob Jr. Bob. And Cheryl. Cheryl. And Jennifer. Jennifer. Now, something happened before you had children. You got married to Bob. Oh, yeah. Oh. I ma married Bob in 1941. 1941. And he was in the service at the time or just he going to the service? Six weeks later. Went to, went to the service. The he service. was in for a long time. He's in the medical corps, I believe. He was in to start with in the medical corps. And then he went into, he uh, went to Cooks and Baker School at Camp Barkley. And then he decided he wanted to fly. So he went to, uh, his basic was down in Uvalde, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I drove down there to, with, my old, with my only child, Kay. We drove down there, and we no more than got there, and he was transferred up to uh, Blackland Air Force. And so we, we were there for about two years in Waco, Texas. And then you came back? Yeah, yes. Um, well, a, a funny thing, while we were at Blackland in, in uh, Waco, Joe Doyle, from Wadsworth. From Wadsworth, mm -hmm. and Betty Standen were there. Both from and Wadsworth. Bob mm -hmm. was instructing this about the second year, and he was one of the instructors when they were going through. Bob All was from Wadsworth, mm -hmm. and he was the son of Merle All, who was yes. what in Wadsworth? He was a grocer. Grocer, and where was his grocery store? Uh, well, where I eventually had, when Bob came back from from the army, he brought the grocery store back. Dad had sold it to, but d Dad wasn't in, a, in it alone. He and um, Bowers, what was his first name, Rosie? <laughs> Not Harry. It went by Harry? Alan Bowers. Was it Harry Bowers? No. no. No, it wasn't Harry Bowers, but I know who you're talking about. It'll come to I us. I couldn't find the picture that I had, but eventually I'll have it and I'll give it to you. But um, Dad sold out, and Bill Curtis had it for a long time, or quite a while. And when we came back from the service, why he purchased it. We purchased that the is exactly little store, right. right? And that's where Sally has her uh, shop. Sally now. Parmalee, or Sally. Mm -hmm. Not Parmalee was a maiden name. Um, Morrison. 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 Morrison has a shop now. <laughs> now, that's right. Now, it's between Watrusa and Pardee, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. halfway in the middle. That's mm -hmm. where it used to be. But Roselle, I, you had a, um, a wonderful uh, experience uh, during your growing up days, too, and you married someone by the name of Nicodemus. That's right. <laughs> now, that Nicodemus clan is a huge clan in Wadsworth, is it not? Well, it was. It there was. Were, there were ten children. And there are about four or five left? One, one boy is still here. And Carol. one girl. June and, is still uh, with us. Three girls, Coma and Opal and June. June. June are still with us. Tell us about the Nicodemus family. Where do they live and what do they do? On Water Street. Water Street in Wadsworth. Yes, close to the railroad track. And Oscar was the father and what was the mother's name? Lucy. Lucy Nicodemus. She was Lucy Snyder. They had 10 children. Now, Lucy Snyder's brother was who? Oh, I know. She came from around Barberton. The, um, my understanding is that there was a relationship between the big Snyder clan and Barberton. That's and right. That's right? That, is that they correct? They came from Snyder. You Snyder, know, Snyder Town. Snyder Town? That's right, exactly. <laughs> and we have another person here from Snyder Town from whom, for whom it was named. So Lucy Snyder and and um, Oscar and Nicodemus got married, yeah. and they had 10 children. Which one did you marry? Uh, Farland. Farland. And how old would Farland be now if he were living? Oh, do I have to tell? <laughs> <laughs> sure. We take that up on my fingers. <laughs> well, we would have been married uh, six, 61 or two years for this, this August. 61 or 62 years? Yeah, he's been gone 17. He was, you were quite old when you got married then. I wasn't too young. No. <laughs> and but I was older than he. And you were older than he. So he'd be about 90 years old at the present time, wouldn't he? He'd be in his 80s. Or still in his 80s? Well, he'd 
late 80s. Well, now, how uh, was he ahead of or behind? Um, um, and the boys, you mean? And the boys, yeah. Uh, you're thinking of uh, Park. Park, 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 yeah, yeah, Park, Park, yeah. <laughs> Park was the oldest boy. Park was the oldest boy. And then Darn Farland, then uh, Carol, and then Harold, I think, is the way it goes. Okay. And then the girls? Hazel Heverin. Hazel Heverin. And uh, Ethel Fisher. Ethel Fisher. And Opal Christopher. And uh, Homer Martin. Evelyn was never married. No. And uh, then there was June. June. Davis. Davis, right. <laughs> uh, Hazel Heverin uh, married Ray Heverin. Yes. And they were in Wadsworth here, and she still has children here in Wadsworth. Um, Hebring. I believe one of her children is Heberling. Heberling, 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 that's right, yeah. And um, uh, her husband, Hazel's husband, um, had LaSalle cleaners at one yes. time and all of that. Um, tell us a little bit about Oscar Nicodemus and what he did. Well, he worked, the only time I think I can remember is that he worked for the match for a long, long time, match and shop. Then what did he do? And then he bought. Uh, the little gas station on the corner of South Party and College. And it was a nice and I think little gas station. brought it from Nictor. John Nictor? Nictor. N I C H T E R. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is that who had that, that's who it? Had I think it before. that's who had it. But it was just a little one building. And then uh, they branched out and made a bigger building. Mm -hmm. uh, that. And they kind of abandoned that. And, and he was quite a sportsman, wasn't he? Hunting and yes, fishing. He loved and, to fish. And, and all, the, all the Nicodemus. Fish and did. hunt. All, of them all were. the boys were fishers. And, and Oscar numbers. was a big man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. A big man. And all of the boys were, well, not all of well, them were. Well, Harold isn't so big. No, but they're, well, they're, they're big husky Yeah, they were husky. Yeah. With big voices and all of that. Uh, wonderful people. The Nicodemus family uh, from way back when. Betty, let's go to your father, too. He did something extraordinary in Wadsworth. And, um, uh, my guess is that uh, some of the things that um, he did, you would not have remembered particularly since, uh, and I don't mean this as a sexist remark, but you were a girl and you probably didn't care about those kinds of things. But he was a Finnish carpenter, mm -hmm. and he did what house, which is still extant, which is highly prized in Norton. The one over on Gardner Boulevard. Gardner Boulevard, <laughs> Dr. Gardner's house. He did that one. And that is highly, highly prized. He was an absolutely excellent craftsperson, excellent craftsman, I guess. Never had anything but a saw and a plane and a hammer. But he was good. He <laughs> was good. He could cut an angle almost perfectly with his eye. He was that good. I remember a little story one time. Brother Kenny was trying to get some roofing done in his house. <laughs> and your dad was at that time probably 85 years old. He died at what, 95 or 6 or something? 90. Yeah. 97, I think. 97. He's 85 years old. He was up there. And Kenny went up to help him. <laughs> and your father had to have it absolutely perfect. <clears throat> Kenny was about a sixteenth of an inch off. <laughs> your dad turned around and didn't say a word. He turned around and says, Can't you see? <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear him saying that. Can't you see? So Kenny just kind of crawled off the roof and let his dad finish it because he had to be <laughs> absolutely perfect in everything that he did. Going back now to the um, to the, the the girlhood days, uh, we've had a lot of people, Roselle, who have told us about what was with us like. As a matter of fact, not too terribly long ago, we had some people say that uh, during the depression it was very difficult, you know, to get absolutely anything. They would have only one pair of shoes, maybe one for work and mm -hmm. one for Sunday. Maybe one dress or one well, pair we, of... We didn't have tennis. <laughs> no tennis shoes. No. no tennis shoes. Tell us about 1910, before the Depression and before the war. You were five years old at the time. Can you tell us what Wadsworth was like? What was the mood in Wadsworth? What was the feeling? Well, I don't think there were very many restaurants or anything like that. And I think we always ate at home all the time. You ate at home all the time. Our milkman was uh, Reimer. Which he, Reimer? Uh, Owen Reimer. Would that be Bill's grandfather? Oh, I, no, I don't think so. Another rhymer, perhaps? They lived out on that. The only place I remember living was on Cal, uh, Broad Street. Broad Street, OK. Mm -hmm. He had a, and I think uh, the earliest time was he, he had this big can of milk, and you took your pan out and got it filled with <laughs> milk. And it had to be 
done fast because there's no refrigeration whatsoever. No refrigeration. It's, a, it's just, you know, it's a fortune we didn't die from all kinds of germs. Well, now, maybe that's the reason we're healthy today. Could be. You, have, you <laughs> kill all those germs off, you became immune to those, all those germs. That's right. What else do you remember about little things like that? Uh, in order to get milk, you would have to go out there. They would ladle out. Uh, all, of course, we always walk to the grocery store. And what was the grocery store at that time, and where was it? The, what kinds the of things one that we went to mostly was Rickards. And where was Rickards grocery store? Well, it was right along about where the uh, drugstore was, and in there, some there was a Rickards grocery store. Now, you mean when you say uh, the drugstore, you mean uh, Brenneman's Rexall. Drug, Rexall drugstore. So that would be on the east side, west side of the road. The west side west of the road, of the Main road. Street, on Main Street, about... Uh, uh, where the bank is in, in there someplace. Yeah, of course, the bank isn't there anymore. And, and then uh, Huntsberger, Frank Huntsberger had his... Uh, store. Store in there. Right. So it'd and be I, about... I think he sold that. A hundred feet uh, from College Street, probably, right? <clears throat> South of College Street. South of College mm. Street, yeah. What kinds but of I, things did they have in the grocery store? And explain well, to us what it looked like. They, things didn't come in boxes there. <laughs> Nothing came they in boxes. Had, they had boxes about 12 inch square, deep and all, where they brought, you got your cookies out of there and crackers out of one of those, and, and the pickles came in a barrel. <laughs> and that's exactly what they were. You buy them by the pound. And, or? and they had a little bitty room between their storage, I guess, and, and the main store. And that's where they had a big shelf in there and carried these big brown uh, things of cheese, what um, butter and so forth. The the kinds of things that would spoil. How did they keep them cold? I don't think there wasn't any ice. I don't think we had even ice at that time. Probably not. Mm -hmm. We had a nice man later because he'd come around to the house and deliver ice. We had a refrigerator. Now you lived at least in the city. Is that correct? Yeah, and therefore, this probably. You um, might remember the first house. light bulbs. Do you remember the first light bulbs that came by and the first electricity? Yes, sort of. And now, Betty, you... had gas lights and finally had... Uh, electric lights. Yeah. And probably only one in a room, too. Is that not right? Well, yeah, upstairs, I guess. Yeah, one in the room. room. Betty, uh, you lived in the country. Yeah, I sure did. And do you remember when electricity came to your house? Mm-hmm. You do remember that? Yeah. Can Took you give us kind of a of a feeling that you had when when you first turned the light switch on <laughs> and electric bulb came on and you lighted up the whole house and at night the room was as just as <laughs> you remember that? Uh, not too well, but it it was a pleasure to be able to get away. We had uh, mostly instead of coal oil, we always had gasoline. And I was always scared to death when they'd put new mantles on those gasoline lanterns or, or lights, and there'd be a big flame come up if you had too much gasoline coming in that generator, and it would scare you to death. But uh, it, I and was he, glad. And here again, the fact that we that you have lived 79 years, you have lived 93 years, we breathe those gasoline fumes in for mm -hmm. years and years, years and years, and no one seemed. You I know, I just wonder if how there, old I was when we got electricity. Finally. Well, let's see. Probably was not until 19, at least 1921 or 22. Was before that. Was it before that you had electricity in Wadsworth? I didn't think we had it that. Well, oh, I think we had it. Down that far, we had it in some of the uh, business districts and so forth. Tell well, we were us, just out of the business. You're just right out of the business district. <laughs> Tell us about um, another part of uh, life which our kids today would absolutely not even so much as think of, uh, age six, seven, and eight working. As Did you have to go to work at age six, seven, and eight, maybe nine or ten? Mm. How about you, Betty? Uh, well, from about, probably about the time I was ten, I went to work in the strawberry and raspberry patch. And that's oh, wow. how I earned my money to <laughs> buy my school clothes. Do you have any year. idea how much money you might have earned in an entire summer? Oh, <laughs> back then we probably got uh, five cents a quart for berries. Three. Well, it wasn't, wasn't yeah, much sometimes more than that. if it was a good year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
You ought to know. I picked berries too. <laughs> I picked berries we, too. We picked uh, berries together. Uh, Neith had strawberries. And when, uh, which Neith would that be? The um, Joe's father, Morgan, mother. Morgan Neith. Morgan Neith had strawberries. And where were those strawberry patches? Back at their house. And where was that? On Broad Street. On Broad Street. Big strawberry patches. <laughs> Yeah, they had a pretty good size. They had a big strawberry patch back there, and that's what people did. And you picked them where, Betty? At Ed Rich's. At Ed Rich's, which is on Silver Creek Road. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if we got five cents a quart, and how many quarts could you pick in the morning, probably? You were very good pickers. I, I was oh. the worst picker in the world. I hate to this day to pick strawberries. <laughs> he ate I too think many. you were more the water boy. I like was the water boy. He was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Um, oh... I suppose we could have picked between 25 and 30 quarts at a... So you probably, in a, what, a three-hour period, two or three-hour period, you would make about a dollar and a half. Yeah. So in a week's either. time that you might have made, might have made, because you didn't pick on Saturdays, did you? Or did you mm -hmm. pick on Saturdays? So just five days a week. So. You might have made five or six or seven dollars yeah. in, in an entire week. That'd be a lot of money. And strawberries mm -hmm. would last how long? Well... About three or four weeks. Maybe a little oh, longer. Oh, yes. But that's about all. I so mean, you might go right into the raspberry raspberries. season. And then Rich's had those luscious big blackberries. Oh, boy, were they good. And <laughs> uh, we were the only ones that would pick the blackberries with them. Uh, they didn't let just everybody in there to pick their black. Well, they didn't have that many either. Mm -hmm. but they were good. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> They're just absolutely wonderful, that's right. Now, you picked strawberries as I a young girl. I don't think they had anything but strawberries. Strawberries. Yeah. What else, what are the kinds of jobs that you have to do as a little girl? Which our kids would not even think well, of doing. Well, probably run errands for the neighbors and get a penny for And it. get a full penny for it, wouldn't you? And we thought we had a gold mine. Because of that penny would buy what? What could you buy for a penny? Well, we'd probably go up to the BB store and see what they had for pens. Which which store? <laughs> BB store. B and B store. <laughs> Do you know anything about the BB store? Uh, on Modern on uh, 150 Main Street. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Barans had it. They called it the BB store. The B oh the BB store, is, not the B and B store down. Not on, the one you're thinking of. Okay. This was on the east side of the road. The east side of the road. And what was the BB store? Well, he handled a little bit of everything, materials and dishes and just a lot of different things. And but this was we George. always called it the BB store. Which Lorenz was this? Uh, Sam, was Sam, Sam Lorenz. Sam Lorenz. George Lorenz's father. George Lorenz's father. George Lorenz lived in Clark's Corners yes. and uh, he died several years ago. But, but it was his father that had His father was, and they go back many, many years. I wish we had some of the relatives of the Lorenzes because and they go back some 125, his, 30 years. His uh, wife and sister-in-law usually worked in there too. So. And uh, Penny would buy what? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I probably used it up so fast I didn't know what I bought. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your social life as a teenager, like between 13 and 16, somewhere in that area. Well, what were you allowed to do? Well, I don't, we took walks on Sunday afternoon. With whom? We had no other uh, transportation. And right. And maybe go uh, with whom would you? With whom would you take the walks? Boyfriends? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no boyfriends, right? No boyfriends. And who, with whom would you take walks? Well, just some of the neighbors that we gather up. Some of the neighbors that you gather up. And how about you, Betty? You didn't have a place to walk there, did you? Oh, yeah. We used to walk down to Silver Creek. Or, well, you know, we had to do a lot of walking on account of the school bus wouldn't come up to our house at that time. So uh, we walked clear down to the end of Silver Creek Road. And uh, so, but like on a Sunday afternoon, we had uh, kids in to play games and mom would croquet, <laughs> would um, make a big batch of popcorn or uh, something that to drink and that was the way we, that was we that, didn't have Coke and all this other stuff mm -hmm. that the kids have today. Nothing at all. Your mother had a particular talent. What was it? Two talents that she had that no one else had in the neighborhood. What were they? 
Gosh, I don't know. Well, she wallpapered for one. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And the other thing is that she would, and people would, would probably cringe at this today, but she would, when people butchered, she would clean out clean, the intestines yeah. and yeah. make those ready for sausage, and they, well, they were just perfectly clean by the time she was finished. She was very good at that. We have a, we want to go back to the Eastern Stars now, because uh, that's very important uh, and important. Tell us what the Eastern Stars used to do and what kinds of people would be involved and, and what their, their, their really, really great things that they, they did for Wadsworth. Uh, Roselle, you start us off here because you started six, 74 years ago, you say? I wasn't very active for about 20 or 25 years. You weren't very years. active. <laughs> I can't picture you're not being active in anything that you would do. I mean, at age 94, you're well, still well, active enough. Young. I, I thought they were all old ladies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you surely don't want to mess around with any old ladies at this age. You want to mess uh, young. I didn't, I, I didn't take an active part in it for quite a while. And then when you became active, what kinds of work did they do? Um, what did they do, Betty? Well, <laughs> we do a lot of good for a lot of the different things. That That's what I'm talking about. What kinds of things? that well, They're very quiet. The, the Masons and the Eastern Stars are very quiet. But we, the, we know that the Masons do a lot for crippled children. We and are burns. charitable, yes. And what kinds of things do the Eastern Star people do? Uh, they help to operate we, a couple of homes yes, and so forth. Yes, we have some Eastern Star homes. And they do what? What kinds of homes one are they? One was in Cleveland, and I think, and one There's was There's one at Mount Vernon. And and Cincinnati. it's for people that uh, like widows or widowers. Retirement. And, and kind of a retirement they go centers. there to live. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what about the charitable kinds of things that you did here in town? Well, they always gave you everything that Such as? Well, well the, uh, Salvation fun, Army. Salvation. You bet. Fish. Fish. And, uh, yeah. We always, now. Community in, chest at Christmas. Yeah. When they have Before the around. United Way, they had the community chest, and they were mm -hmm. very, very active in that. Who and, were so, oh, go ahead. In, in recent years, we've given to the Burns Institute in uh, Cincinnati. For the, yes, for the Shrine, Burns Institute. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of good for. Now, what about social life with the Eastern Stars? Well, <laughs> If you want to make it a social life, you can, but it's a lot of traveling because we have um, 20 different districts in this part of Ohio, and uh, we, or and we in have Ohio. 20, 20 or something, 18 or 20 at one time, and yes. then more than that, I guess, at one time. And uh, if you want to travel, now when I was younger and I was worthy matron in 1957, I traveled all the time. But last year, in 97, 40 years later, I was worthy matron, and I couldn't travel like I did when I was younger. The traveling was to go I, to various... A, a district covered from Loudonville to... Um, Up to Avon Lake Avon, and Avon Lorraine. Lake. And so it's pretty... And the reason you didn't travel was you didn't want to, but you could have if you would have wanted to. Is that right? Uh, you couldn't well, I couldn't couldn't last year because I had a knee replacement. Knee replacement. Now, I'm going to ask you another question in a couple of seconds about another specific talent that you have. But before we do that, I want to go to Roselle. And you haven't told us about your family yet. You have a husband whom you married. And then what about... I had three boys. Three boys. Tell us about the three boys. Bruce and Dan and Dale. Bruce, Dan, and Dale. And they have children of their own. And almost all of them are in the Wadsworth area. Is that correct? What's that? Almost all of them are in the Wadsworth area. Y yes, most Tell of them. Tell us who the grandchildren are and um, your great-great-grandchild uh, just recently. Oh, yes. <laughs> I had the minister day for a little bit. <laughs> We're very proud of that. Um, well, let me see. Well, I don't know that we did anything spectacular. Well, you, I mean, what about their names, the grandchildren? And who are they and where are they here in Wadsworth? Well, are they all Nicodemuses because? Je Jeff and uh, Dan has three boys, Jeff and Todd and Mark. Jeff, Todd and Mark. And Dale had two girls, mm -hmm. but they're, one's in Washington State and I think the other one's in Pennsylvania. Okay, and what about the third one? He's not married yet. <laughs> not married yet. <laughs> he's waiting for the right one to come along. Well, I don't know, but he's the youngest. And Betty, he's you had a talent that is probably unique to Wadsworth and probably unique to your profession. Mm. You're a beautician. Oh, yes. Now, 
Tell us what kinds of things you do as a beautician which makes people say, what, you do that? I'll give you a clue. It's on the corner of, of uh, Lyman Street and um, Maple Street. Or not Maple, but uh, the next one up, what is it? Um, Lyman Street and then Highland. No. Funeral home. Oh. <laughs> Well, I've, I've been doing that, the hair at, I did it for Hilliards. Uh, when Marcella Mullaney left town, I started doing it. How I, many years have you been doing that? Oh gosh, uh, how long has it been since Kenny Cox had the funeral? Oh boy, at least 30 years, probably 25, 30 years okay. at least. And then when Tom Mullaney took over, uh, I started doing it then, and I still go down. While we were in Florida the couple of years we were there, the year round, I don't know who did the hair then, but when I come back, I told Tom I was ready, so. <laughs> Betty, I don't mean to be gruesome, but how do you do that? It's very easy. Why is that? I mean, no one they complains. They don't talk back to you. <laughs> <laughs> now that's not nice, but. No, but that's what it is. Really, I, I don't know. I do it because a lot of these people I know, and. Oh, you did my mother. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, I try my best to do what I can. Now, how do you do that? I mean, uh, if it's not too. Uh, um, Professionally intriguing. How do you how do you do that? Do you uh, do the the, the person that isn't sitting up? Is no, they're laying flat. <laughs> and then you write. And you do the uh, the uh, whatever needs to be done. If you need to put rollers in or use a hot iron or whatever, to. Uh, it's almost as if the person were just alive. Just as if you were going to do. The now line. you don't have to do anything to men, right? No, they do their own hair cutting. They do actually cut their hair? If need be. Oh, really? A trimmed up or whatever. Oh, my. Of course, I won't have to worry. Myself, when I die, <laughs> I don't have any hair left. Yes, So question. I don't have to worry about that one at all. Roselle, I want to come back to you now just for uh, a couple of minutes about um, uh, something that uh, everyone knows you for in Wadsworth, and that is your, your verb. The fact that you're 93 years old, no one seems to know that because you have forgotten that you're 93 years old and everyone else has. What are some of the activities that you're involved with right now as a 93-year-old? Um, what do you do? I do all the rest of the old ladies do. You, you do play bingo. And play bingo. And, uh, they have craft shops. Now you're very active, very uh, active. You had a little operation here a year or so ago, wasn't it? Or was it this yeah. past year with uh, she had a stroke. Uh, I had a stroke. Oh, you had a stroke? Well, you're fine shape though. So uh, I, I don't, I'm not very active anymore. You're not very active anymore. And you're living in the Liberty Liberty Residence. Residence. Liberty Residence mm -hmm. with a lot of very, very wonderful people, many of whom have been in this, so. on this program. When in 19, uh, what year were you married again? When was I married? What year? Uh, it had to be in the <laughs> That'll be in the 30s, I guess. In the 30s. I, I don't remember. When you were first married, where, where, where did you live? When we were first married, over on Fairview. On Fairview. Now, is the house still there? Yes. And who were some of the neighbors that you had at that time? Doris Nicewander. Doris Nicewander. On, on, on one side of it. Now, and Doris Nicewander was... Nick went to the service. By, we had, they what? We, 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 Nick went in to, had to go into the service, and we had intended to build a home. So we had to wait till he got out of service to go. And that happened. We, so we moved, we sold ours, and we moved to the other side of Doris. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about Doris Nicewander. Who was she? Well, she was a good neighbor, I guess. And what was her husband's responsibility in town? Mm, he did everything. <laughs> he did everything. Yeah. Now, which one of the Nicewanders was a minister, so we get that straightened? Not any. There was a minister. Reverend Nicewander, was there not? <laughs> they weren't related, were They're they? They not related, though. I just want to make sure. See, no. One of the things we do here is to make sure that we have not only the relationships Carl, but the people Carl who are. Carl was her husband. Right. And he'd been married before. Carl, Carl Nicewander. Now, you lived on Fair View, View which is south of Broad Street. That's right. South of and Broad Street. Just north of where the streetcar track was. Where the streetcar track was. And the streetcar track went all the way into, well, Barberton, Akron, and Kent. Yeah. We went through Silver Creek. 
Do you remember somewhere fairly close to there, maybe on East Street, that there was a tabernacle? Mm -hmm. Do you remember a tabernacle? Wasn't that, wasn't that in on South Lyman? Mm -hmm. Was the South Lyman? I know it was in that I woodsy it was area there. Down in the, in the valley. Like. In the valley. Tell us about the tabernacle that you can. Betty, you remember the tabernacle? I, I remember it, yes. I was never there. What do you remember about the tabernacle? Well, it was just a great big old gray building down and, in the hollow, like. And where, where did that finally move? I mean, where did that congregation move? I don't know. I don't know where they ever moved. Well, I, I'm sure that I'm going to be corrected on this if I'm, you know, uh, I'm wrong. But I thought it became the Christian Missionary Alliance. So some of the people there were the, could the Christian and Missionary that Alliance. I'm been. trying to get the history of that, and I'm hoping that someone will call and say, I know the history of the tabernacle, and perhaps we can do that. You know, one of the things that we're so grateful for here is the fact that we can do this on this program because so many people watch the program. and. <clears throat> Um, WCTV lets us do this, obviously, free of charge, but, you know, they work with volunteers. I mean, everyone's a volunteer here. A couple people uh, are in charge, but they all have volunteers, and we desperately need volunteers. And I'm looking at the two of you, and the two of you still have enough energy to become volunteers for WCTV. You can run cameras, and besides that, you can get into the games free. I could. Yes, you could. And you would have to be with all those old people. I'm too old to get the games. <laughs> And the other thing that we're so grateful for is the fact that the Wasn't There Historical Society is sponsoring this. And uh, we have really become a, a viable part. Uh, we won the Blue Tip Festival the other day. Uh, Marty and, Mar and Marvin Cooter uh, designed a program. They had several people. Uh, they designed a float, and we got first place, and I thought it was very nice. So just because we're old does not mean that we are dead. We aren't dead well, yet. We are, we're going full blast. Um, Betty, a couple little things here that we have not gone into, and that is your family. You talked about your girls and so forth, but where are they? Are they in Wadsworth? Is anybody in Wadsworth? Uh, Cheryl. Cheryl's in Wadsworth. When I moved up to Menwa with my beauty shop from the old store building, I was well, there. Tell us about the old store building. We haven't talked about that yet. You'll have to make it faster because we're going to run out of time. Oh. What store building was it? It was what Bob's dad had had built in 1926, I believe it was. There on uh, on College on College Street, Street. Street. Yeah, the, the grocery store. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was the grocery store. Betty's Beauty Bar, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I moved up to Menwa when they opened up Menwa. And now, I think I was there till I retired, and then. I, which I ha I, <laughs> I didn't retire, but I did. But um, Cheryl, my daughter, took it over, and she has it yet today. Now, you have a sister-in-law who's in this business as well. Tell us about her. Ruth Flood. Ruth Flood, yeah. who, is, who is Ruth Bergner. Mm -hmm. And where do they live, and where is their home? And tell On us about Fair, that. The corner of Fair Lawn and Broad. Now, this is and Fair Lawn, which is yeah. north of Broad Street on the corner of Broad and College Street. I'm um, Broad Street Broad and, and Fair Lawn. Fair Lawn. And um, she has a beauty shop as well there. So In their home, yeah. In their home. And uh, this must be one of the, well, I, I was going to say it's one of the reasons that, that the Flood girls are also good looking. But I oh. suspect that the reason for that is that you had good genes because <laughs> of your wonderful parents. Uh, we have only a couple seconds left here, but I wanted to ask three quick questions. Um, the first one is going to go to you, Roselle. When you were born in Wadsworth and you thought of yourself as being a Wadsworthite and so forth, who were the neighbors that you looked up to and who probably helped to bring you to where you are well, today? I don't know. I, as I said, we had no way really of getting along. So we, the current neighbors, they had a couple girls the same age as I. And who were those people? I met Hunts. The Hunts, H-U-N-T. Mm. That, that's the that's home that Betty's folks moved in, where the Hunts had lived. Okay. The Hunts were neighbors there. Right across the street. Right across us. the street. And next door to us was a Harper's. Harper. Do you remember Bob Harper? That Bob was, Harper. Well, the, his folks lived there. Now, Bob Harper was a um, mm -mm. taxi driver, didn't he have a? No. Or that was Don that's Harper. A, that's Don. That's another Not family. Another Harper. They weren't no. related. Bob Harper was the head coach or something over in Akron schools for years. Or in the, he had something. Was his, what was his wife's first name? Halcyon. What? Halcyon Olin, she was. 
Halcyon. Halcyon. H A L. Halcyon. H A L. Like the Halcyon days of summer, you know, the quiet summer. And those were your neighbors, and those were the ones that you. Sonnensteins. Sonnensteins too. I want to hear about the Sonnensteins. Tell us about the Sonnensteins too. They lived on the corner of King and King and North Party. King and North Party. Also. Joe's, Joe lived down about two or three houses from us. That was Charles' brother, Joe. And they lived right next to the corner house. Now the next question is going to be a quickie. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Well, I don't. Has anybody ever said anything about when in 1918 when the two trains used to go through here? No. Well, we always, of course, we only lived about three or four houses down. So we'd rush up there when they say, "Well, the one's coming through." Well, they went on through, and then they would camp out at my uncle's farm there, the Mills farm, for overnight. And what, well, in uh, east of town? East of town. Mm -hmm. uh, they would camp there That overnight. is something. That is something. I don't know if anybody ever said anything about that or not. And Betty, the same question for you. Who were the people who, who uh, helped develop you? What, uh, of course, your neighbors, you didn't have any neighbors, did you? Mm -mm. So you had other people who helped develop you. What made you become a beauty beautician, for instance? Well, I think having Ruth Flood as my sister-in-law, I think that was a lot of... Uh, that was a big one right there. And the last question is going to be, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? <laughs> I, don't know I don't know of anything. We are so grateful That's because for two reasons. Number one, lies. we were able to get both of you on here because you have, what, <laughs> 70 year, 79 years of history and you have 93 years of history. But the main thing here is that uh, the two of you have been together and working, worked together yeah. for some at least 50 and we years. And never fought. And never fought. <laughs> and now that era is over. And we will never know about that unless we hear from you. And we now have heard it. We are grateful and we want to thank you very, very much for what turns out to be another chapter in Wadsworth history. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you.